My brethren, the peace of the Lord. I invite everyone to stand up in reverence to the reading of the word which is located in the gospel according to John chapter 12. Amen. Everyone found Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. For whoever needs help, it is here on the projection here. And six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he has raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with the with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil, but one of the, his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrance oil, fragrant oil not sold for 3,000 denarius and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, Let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor who for the poor who have with you alone, you have with you alone, but me you do not have always. My brethren, this word that we see here on this text we uh, there is a mention of a few people. The Lord Jesus was in the seat of Bethany, in the house of one of the brethren, one of the servants that knew Jesus. And they were celebrating what Jesus was doing amongst them, the miracles, a few cures, and they were there serving a supper. And now we see the person of Lazarus and his two sisters. And you will see on the word, every time that the Bible makes mention of a woman, it is referring to the church. Let me see here. It's a text that is known of ours. The message that speaks of Mary and Martha, the two sisters that represent at the moment two types of church. The faithful church and the unfaithful church. And we will see here also on this text the position of these two women, these two sisters that shows to us the position of two types of churches. Uh, in the past, there were a great joy, and during this, during this supper, there was a great joy because Jesus was present, and they were happy because Lazarus had been resurrected. It's not just about any person that is resurrected. And the Lord Jesus, at that moment, he operated this great miracle, this sign of wonder, which is to take man from its state, mortal, without the presence of God, in bringing that person uh, to a 
to be uh, in the presence of God eternally. This is the great secret of the Word of God. That's why Jesus came to the world to remove us from this condemnation, from this judgment to death, and to guarantee us eternal life in His presence. That's why Jesus came here. And in this episode here, as they were celebrating this great banquet, Martha, she had prepared <coughs> she had prepared a dinner. We may be able to say it. She it was her way of thanking God, thanking Jesus. She cooked, she prepared everything, she served. She she was she was very skilled. It's nice to have people like this. Whenever we go visit them, we enjoy it, we eat. We have Luciano here. So I, whenever there's a party, Luciano is there. Luciano is the m most important guest. I, I know why he's being this guest. Because people like this. And they, in order for, in order to thank God, thank Jesus, she served, Jesus served the people around, and they were celebrating, rejoicing, eating, and Lazarus was also present, sitting at the table with Jesus, and for sure there, there were others, others that have been also uh, being cured by him, and also that may have received a word from Jesus, because Jesus, when, whatever he passed by, a crowd of people always followed him, many by their own self selfish interests, but others because they truly wanted a blessing of God, and because they had understood the reason why he came to the world, but the majority wanted just a benefit for their life. But they were all there in a way of a sign of gratitude to Jesus. And this text is very uh, interesting because this week we, we celebrate Thanksgiving. People reminding God, thanking God, showing that um, um, thanking God for what God has uh, offered men. It is good. But it, it is interesting that in the middle of this celebration, Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, during the, the celebration, she gets up and she went to what Jesus was, where Jesus was. And she goes through it, uh, the crowd and she goes all the way to where Jesus was. And there she brings um, a vessel made out, out of wood, uh, made of stone. Today would be a bottle of perfume. And she breaks that vessel filled with perfume. And it's very expensive. The word makes mentions, mention of this. Very expensive perfume. And she pours it out on Jesus. And she takes her own hair. And she wipes, she dries Jesus' feet with her own hair. And many didn't understand uh, Mary's actions. They were, they thought it was a scandal. They didn't understand it. What a waste. Why didn't, why didn't she sell the perfume? She could have sold the perfume and, uh, with the money given to the poor. What a waste, a complete waste. But Jesus understood what Mary had just done. And Jesus at that moment, she, he interrupts that reproach from Judas and Jesus said, Judas, wait a minute, you don't know anything. The action of this woman was a noble action, was a prophetic action. She is here pre preparing me for my burial. My brother, this was actually a prophetic action. Because Jesus, at that moment, he understood truly 
the reason why he had come to the world. And I will explain to you. But before moving forward, I want to stop and expound on this action of Judas. What a waste. Because people think this. What a waste. When you pick up something of great worth and then you put it out on Jesus' body. People really don't understand this. The reason why we as a church we are always kneeling down in the presence of Jesus. People don't understand the reason why we have this necessity of praying to the Lord, of reading the Bible, of seeking the Lord, of dedicating yourself to the Lord, or taking it a time out of your life, which is one of the things that is of greatest worth in your life, which is your time. And take a few minutes and dedicate those minutes to the Lord and devotion to the Lord. People don't understand it. How can it be explained? No, Saturday night, we are here singing songs to praise the Lord. How can it be explained? People come here, they leave Brazil to go on vacation here and then go to church praising the Lord, glorifying the Lord. How can it be explained? How can it be explained? The playing of an instrument, the children that are listening to the word of the Lord, the children that are receiving it, revealed teaching, a direction for their lives. How can it be explained? People don't understand. They think that it is a waste. You know why? Because people want to do what is easiest. And that's what Martha did. Hey, I'm going to prepare a celebration. I'm going to thank Jesus. I'm going to thank Jesus for curing and to having brought my son to back to life again. She could do it. And as it is, it was her way of thanking God. And in the same way, many out there are um, celebrating and thanking God in their own way. A few like to give a little money and give this and that. But Jesus doesn't want that. God doesn't want it, doesn't need it. The fact that we are here in the house of the Lord, we are the ones who are benefited. We're the ones who are blessed by God. God, I said here before, God doesn't need our praise. God doesn't need your praise. God doesn't need you to come here and sing. No. Because if we don't do this ourselves, even the stones are going to cry out to the Lord. Nature is already praising the Lord. God doesn't need this. And people think that it is uh, credible. I go only Sunday night and that is it's, it's sufficient. People think that. Like Martha, I'm going to make a, a party for Jesus. I'm going to serve. I'm going to help. I'm not going to be my portion. And it's my way of thanking God. They think that when they give a little money here or coming to the servant once a week is a lot. Maybe it's sufficient. A few even say, I'm going to say here, because we are inside of the church. Why service every day? Why pray to the Lord every day? Why read in the Bible every day? Christians inside of the church saying that. It's, it's incredible when we hear something like that. Oh, Pastor, I can't, you know why? You know, the situation during the week is difficult, right? I can't, I don't have time. But Sunday I'm there. Sunday, I'm, I'm there. I'm not going to miss it. So then they, they blame the work and they blame everybody. They don't, and it's this and that. Don't, they don't have time. They need to sleep. They blame everything else. Imagine if the Lord one day uh, gets tired of you. Can you imagine? Uh, any moment in your life, if God turned to you and said, Hey, I'm a little tired today. 
I'm not going to answer your prayer. Today, you are on your own. Today, I'm going to take a day off, and you take care of yourself. And I'm going to rest. Can you imagine that? Where would we be if God said something like that to us? My brethren, we come up to the house of the Lord and we pray to the Lord because we need the blessing. If you think that coming to the service once a week, two, three, praying to the Lord a few times is enough, and so then that's all right. But I'm going to tell you one thing. You could have already received your blessing. You could have already received the answer to your prayer if you've been praying for, for months and a few for years. If you were more dedicated to the Lord and if you were more faithful to the Lord and if you had a, a better, a greater commitment with eternity, not with Mennonite Church, that's not it. When I'm preaching here, you're coming and filling the temple, the church. No, we don't need that. But the question is that you uh, you have a fellowship with the Lord and telling the Lord, I'm thankful to you because of the miracles, because of the blessings, because of my son, because of my work, because what you have given me, because of sustenance, because of, of our daily bread. And this is what we need to give to the Lord. This is what He waits for. He's not waiting for a dinner. He doesn't want a little money. He doesn't want any effort and sacrifice. If, if it is sacrifice, it's not necessary either. Man, he needs to be carried by the Holy Spirit to be in fellowship with the Lord. We cannot do this just because the pastor is saying or because the deacon is is talking to us or because the brother keeps sending text messages and asking of us. No. We see the difference here. Mary, she gave to the Lord what she had of greatest worth. Mary didn't give anything for this life, but she went in the middle of everybody. Everybody, she didn't want to show off. She didn't have to go every service to show to the Lord that I'm a dedicated service. That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about anything material. We talk about your interior life with the Lord. You can be in the church here every day. But if you don't have fellowship, if you don't understand what God has for your life, it is meaningless. Nobody understood. Just Jesus understood. But that's, that's true. Nobody understands. Nobody knows your trial, your difficult. It is just you and, and the Lord. I'm saying this here because I want to say to see if the Lord may touch your heart, to see if the Lord may bring you to have an understanding of what God wants for your life. It's not what I, what I want for my life. Nobody understood. Ju Judas didn't understand. No one understood. No one understood why Mary, with, in her silence, she went there, she went to Jesus, broke the vessel, and poured out the vessel, and uh, put out the perfume in the own body of Jesus. But he understood. You know why he understood? Because this action of Mary was an action of, that came from inside of her heart. What she did, only the redeemed soul can do. What Mary did there, that called Jesus' attention, and made Jesus understand that message, that prophetic action, was because Mary, instead of her heart, in her silence, only uh, the Lord and her, she was not like getting up, making that Pentecostal prayer. No. The quiet. Herself and the Lord. You know what did she just say to Jesus? Lord, I want to thank you. And my way of thanking the Lord. I'm not a cook. I don't know how to serve. I'm, I'm not like my sister. But my way of thanking is this. I want to thank the Lord. Because my brother was dead. My brother was 
already buried for a few days. He was already with no human resources. No doctor could have helped. No science could have brought him from the place where he already was. It was already decreed the, the, the defeat, the death of my brother. I was already beginning to accept his loss. But you went there where only you can go and took him out of death and gave him life once again. And today I'm thankful to the Lord. Today I can thank because of God's deeds, for this great blessing, because what was lost, my hope, now I can embrace my brother once again. Now I can leave him a brother for a few more years. That's what Jesus understood. You know why? That's why he said, she prepared me for my burial. You know why? Because that's why Jesus came to the world. And that's why he died. So that you today could uh, get out of your judgment to death. And of the death, it, was, it is already sure to men. Because the only thing that is uh, certain in our lives is death. The only thing that is certain for you, you can say, what do you have in life? You have goods, you have possessions, you have properties, you have cars. No, I have only one thing. It's my death that will arrive at any moment. So then you have said the, the correct thing. Because man, man's judgment is to death. But Jesus came to this world. He died in your place. He died in my place so that we both could have the assurance and the guarantee of our salvation. And that's what Mary told Jesus. She didn't have to say with words. She didn't have to shout it to anybody to call attention. She went there in a quiet place. And while everybody was surprised, a few for sure thinking Jesus. And Jesus and Mary went in her way and said, Lord, thank you for salvation, for my life, for the life of my children in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the life of my husband in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the life of my wife in your presence, for the life of my parents, for the life of my neighbors. Thank you, Lord. That's what the church needs to thank the Lord for. That's what we need to have in our hearts. That's the thankfulness. Not set a day aside of the new year and stop everything. No, it's every day. Because we need to have fellowship with the Lord every day. And the Lord is expecting that from us. He understands this. And He, in the same way, He wants to speak to us. He wants to listen to our prayers. You know why? Because it pleases Him to answer. David said, I want to be one day in the house of the Lord. Isn't it true? Be rather than 1,000 years away from the house of the Lord, David had pleasure in going up to the house of the Lord. I rejoice when they told me, let's go to the house of the Lord. So when one was invited to go to the house, he was already happy. It, it pleased him to be in the presence of the Lord. My brother, that's why, what tonight the Lord wants us to understand. You need to. I need to have fellowship with the Lord. Why? Because I need to be blessed by the Lord. I want to be blessed by the Lord. Because I want to have victories in the presence of the Lord. Because I want to hear the glory of God. Because I want to see salvation in Jesus. Because I want the Lord to be able to reach my my family. Because I want the Lord to honor everything that I do. That That's the reason why. Only the Lord understands it and only He can give this to us. That's why I said at the beginning, two types of church, two women, two sisters, Martha in her way and Mary in her way. But we call the attention of Jesus was not the great banquet. We call the attention of Jesus when it shown to Jesus what He was going to go through soon after uh, uh, soon, uh, six days before the Passover, and Jesus died in the Passover, six days before. At that moment, he understood 
I know what she's doing because she's preparing me for my burial because at that moment Jesus truly he was able to glorify, glorify the Father he doesn't say here but I understand that at that moment Jesus t told the Father Father I thank you because he came to the world because it is because of declarations like Mary's because of prayers like Mary's because of glorification like Mary's that Jesus came to the world because he wants to hear you saying thanks he wants to hear your gratitude he wants to see you in this position you with the Lord whatever you are in your home at work at church whatever you are if you are giving him a glory to God a hallelujah and saying I'm thankful Lord Jesus will understand the reason why he died for you you intercede for the Father on your behalf the blessing of God will come to your life amen may the Lord in bless us in this in this way let's hear a song
Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Glory to, to God. Let us stand up. Let us have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, at this moment we praise your name. Because every day in a special way, we have taken care of, of your entire people. We praise you, Lord, because you have not allowed us to be deceived, but have shown your truth, have shown the way to salvation, have revealed yourself amongst your chosen. We praise the Lord for your word, for the good choice that we made one day, and because of great mercy of you having chosen us to be in your house. We praise the Lord, therefore, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah, God. My brethren, the Lord has shown in a gift a woman that she was having trouble to come to the church because of her trials many things hindering her her walk maybe the way she dressed up maybe the way she spoke the way she was but when she entered into the door of the church she thought I'm going to go back I'm going to go home I'm going to watch the service but the angel came pick up pick her up by the hands and would bring her inside of the church service and at that moment she would begin now to think she would now receive uh, deliverance in her mind and during the service during the praises during the message the Lord would work completely in her giving her a new understanding and she received a mission a mission to do this to the same with her family members to carry this message this understanding of being in the house of the Lord of being in fellowship with the Lord she now had this commitment of carrying this to her family members and this is very important because we cannot give up on our children. We can never give up on our family members. I was born and raised, I was was born and I was raised in a family, Christian family. And my father always, he would force me to go to church. Thank God for this. It was not half an hour of service, it was three hours. I was, I was, I was, upset I didn't speak with him the whole afternoon and at night the same thing I was upset the entire day on Sunday I didn't speak with him at night it was the same thing two more hours of service and today I'm here healthy my arm didn't fall nothing fell I didn't miss anything only gained bring this to your home it is here the instruction of the Lord Pass it on, this importance of you. Bring your family to have fellowship with the Lord and be in the presence of the Lord. You only have to gain. You only you only receive benefits if your, you and your family members are in the presence of the Lord. You have trials. Trials, they will always come. It's not because you have a family in the presence of the Lord that you will be now rich. No, no. That's not a, what I'm saying. The trials are going to come. But you learn how to fight with the victory on your hands. Because you are more than victorious. Jesus already gave us the victory. And the church is not fighting for the victory. The church is fighting with victories already in their hands. You do understand this? You don't fight because you think that you're going to win. You fight if you're faithful to the Lord. You will have the trial, 
but you are you know one thing the victory is yours for as long as you are in the presence of the Lord you will never be defeated the Bible tells us this the servant of the Lord was in the middle of the trial Daniel his friends David Joseph many others they had trials great trials greater than ours but they were not defeated we know why because they were faithful to the Lord and God honors the faithful the commitment of the Lord is with the faithful amen let us close our eyes and pray closing the service but father we want to praise your name because we know that you are present because your word says that when two or three are gathered in your name there you would be and by faith we know faith we know that you are here a um, answering to our prayers helping us carrying us bring us to have moments of victory in your presence we praise you Lord for this we're thankful to the Lord we never tire to say this that we are thankful to you Lord for everything that you have done in our lives receive our the adoration of your church and take us home in peace and that we may never get, get scourged in a walk look behind or to the side but we may only look to the target to the heavens because that's where our rescue will be coming from receive our pray and uh, pray that we say in the name of Jesus in your name we say that wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God our eternal Father the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever Amen Amen the church may be seated if any of you desire prayer we are here at your disposal I'd like to remind you that the subscription to the, sem the registration to the seminar is still open the brethren needs to um, subscribe how many of you have already registered here raise your hand oh man nobody's going <laughs> are you going still or not the brethren need to register December 5th in a week more or less a uh, week and a half is, is going to be the last day of subscription Eliza is there with the computer no it's crazy to get someone he gets a commission to have a to have a subscriber he gets a commission so look for brother Elias he needs this help amen and I say peace the Lord to everyone Now we're going to have a meeting with the praise group soon after the assistance, after the prayer. Amen.